All right, when you're using Google Sheets, a lot of times you want to summarize your table of data by date. So I have a table here, sample data, goes down to a thousand rows. And we're going to do a series of three different questions and answer those different ways. And the first question that we're going to ask is, we just want to know the total sales dollars by month. All right, so the first way that we're going to try to answer that is we're going to take our mouse and we're just going to click anywhere in this table of data to let Google Sheets know what we're looking at. And you come over and left click on the Explore button. So the Explore button is supposed to use AI to analyze the data. And it already tries to help you out with this graph that does nothing. This graph actually shows that I randomly generated these numbers. So it may show something if it was real data. Um, but as I scroll here, through here, you can just see that it's trying to draw some inferences for you. But what we want to do, we want to stick to the original three questions that we're going to work on. And the first one is discerning the total sales by month. So what you have to do is you have to change that question into something the spreadsheet understands. So the word total isn't very clear, at least it isn't to me. I don't know if that's the number of sales or the dollar amount of sales. So we're going to use the word sum instead. So that's an addition instead of a count. Sum of, and then I'll use the word price because that corresponds to this header. So it'll know that I want the dollar amount. So I'll say sum of price and then by month. So Sheets is aware that there's one column in here that's full of dates. So if I use the word month, Sheets knows that I'm operating on dates. So it should be able to pick that out. And I hit the enter key, it does a little bit of thinking. And it actually does return the right answer. So you can get this in a formula or a chart. We want a formula for what we're doing. So we will leave it on formula. We'll left click on show formula and we'll drag this into our sheet. All right, we'll say that's good enough for the month. Hopefully you know that the one is January, the two is February, etc. But we will at least change these to look like dollar values. So we'll left click on format as currency, get rid of those decimal points, and there we go. So let's do a quick check for completeness. We will sum this column. Sheets is suggesting the range G3 through G14. That's right, so we'll click tab and it comes up with i need to format that 45 million if i left click on column d look in the lower right hand corner at that sum it's 45 million so it's appears as if um, we're cooking with gas at this point and the first thing that we wanted to do total sales by month we did with the explore button now we'll do another one which is total number of cars sold by quarter so this would be, well, let's just come up and talk about it as we type it into the explore function. So we'll select the data again, and we will say, uh, I want the total in this case, but it, I'm not talking about addition this time, I'm talking about counting. So we will use the word count. And you can count any of these columns, right? I want each one of them to just count as one. So conceptually, I think the easiest one is to count the car make. So we're saying one Nissan, one Lexus, one Dodge. Uh, so we'll say count of, and then I'll type car make. And we'll say by again, so it knows how we want it to be sorted. And we'll just try the word quarter to see if that works. Hit enter. And Explorer was smart enough again to know what I meant by quarter. So it says quarter one, two, three, four. We'll click on show formula again, and we'll drag this into our spreadsheet. And that's the count. So this should be a thousand because we have a thousand rows. Let me highlight it, go into the lower right hand corner and we're at a thousand. So that was pretty easy, right? So the explore function, that's two out of three. Let's try the third one. Scroll down a little bit here and I keep putting my cell in the wrong place. We'll go over here and let's say, let's say now that we want to know the total sales dollars by day of the week. So we'll go back to sum sum of price by day of week we'll press enter and in this case it, it can't read my mind correctly i want to see down here 
if I, uh, let's say it's a chart Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? But it's just doing specific days. If I click on the formula option, it's doing the same thing. Actually, at first I thought it did it right because it only went to seven. But if you scroll down, it's probably going to go all the way to 31. So that's day of the month, if you ask me, not day of the week. If you try to change this to say weekday, it still doesn't get it right. All right, so the explore option is batting two out of three on answering these questions. This is not bad, right? If you want to try to use it, go ahead. I think the key with using it, as we talked about, is getting the right words. So sum, count, average, and then using the names of the row headers for what you actually want to look at. Let's move on to the second option. I find this option to be more reliable than the explore function. Learning curve is a little bit higher. What we're going to be using is pivot tables. If you're not familiar with how to use them, I'll link to a video on that in the upper right hand corner. Just a little tutorial on it, but you should be able to get what you need, at least for the purposes of this video, just by watching what we're going to do here. So what we want to do is summarize this with a pivot table, right? So we'll go to insert pivot table and the pivot table wants to know where the data is. So we will click on select data range and these guesses are usually pretty good. We'll say it's cars A1 to D1001. That's right. So we'll select that, say okay. And then it needs to know where to put the table. Make sure you check existing sheet. Well, if you want to do it the way I'm doing it, do that. We're going to put it in F2 and click OK and then create. And you have a blank pivot table here. We'll go back to the question. It's the sales by month. So for the values, I like to start with the values conceptually uh, so we can kind of work backwards. So we want to end up with the price. And the summarization guess of sum is right in this case because we just want the total dollar amount, but we want it by month. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Let's think about the fact that we want the month values coming down this column. So each one of those is a row. So we will add to the rows the manufacture date. And it's picking up the formatting that we did in the last step and then not having the formatting below. So we're going to left click on column G, go to formatting and clear the formatting, which didn't work. <laughs> so we'll just keep going and we'll fix that when we're done. So we have one more step. We do have the dates here and we have uh, the data that we want for the values, but the dates aren't summarized yet. So what we can do though is right click on them, create pivot date group and just pick month. All right, so it even gives us the name of the month instead of the number. If you ask me, this is a beautiful table, exactly what we wanted. And we're done for question number one. Now, next we want to get the total number sold by quarter. So that's going to be easy. Let's take a shortcut here. We'll highlight this existing pivot table. We'll go up to copy. We'll go below and we'll just paste the entire table below to get a head start. So you don't have to recreate the wheel right click on these date groups and we will change it from month, which is checked right now to quarter, All right? So he even puts a Q before the quarter, which looks kind of cool. Q1, Q2. And the last thing that we want to do, we don't want the total dollar sales. We wanted the count for this question. So we'll go to the values. We can leave it on price. You can count the price also. Each line is going to have one price. And we'll say count and it's returning a thousand. Here's one last thing here. What you need to do is just take the dollar signs off. So we'll just format that as a number and get rid of those decimal points. All right. So we've answered the second question pretty easily with the pivot table. And now for the third question, and this is the one that Explorer couldn't get right. And what we want to do is the total dollar sales. So we want these values. 45 million of them, but we want it by the day of the week. So let's start with this pivot table. We'll copy it. In this case, I'll just do control C on my keyboard 
and control V is in Victor for paste. Because we're halfway there, we have the right values, which is the sum of the price, but we're doing it by month here. So let's just change pivot date group. And what we're looking for here is that the day of the week is an option, right? And it is, these are very thoughtfully chosen options here because it has something called quarters. It has day of the week. So they know what you're looking for. Left click on day of the week. And there it is nice and easy. Same sum, 45 million, 45 million. So we've answered all three of the questions with a pivot table. The last option that we'll go over is the query function. So sometimes you don't want your data in a pivot table. For whatever the reason, you want to generate it on the fly with a function instead of having it in a table. So we will get rid of these two columns and we'll start over. And we're going to generate this first query the easy way. We're going to go back to the explore function, ask that original question and use that query to work through it. So we're going to say sum of price by month. We'll take that formula. drag it into the result. And this is what we started out with because you get it from the explore function, but you could write this from scratch. So we'll double click inside of this and we'll talk about it briefly. The query function always needs to know the source of your data. So it's designating this table and then it needs to know what to return. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So we'll just kind of pull this apart as we go along. It's going to return column three, which is starting from the left here, one, two, three. Since it's on the same worksheet, it could just say C for the letter of the column. You just leave it as column three. That way, if you put it somewhere else, it could still work. But it's using the month function and in this query language, it's based on zero. So January is the number zero. So it's adding one to everyone. And then the next column that it's going to return is the sum of column four, which is the sum of price. And then we come by and we group it by month. So that's the uh, rows that come down are going to be by month. And then we're going to label the columns month and sum. And then this last value, because we started this range at row two, we're saying there's zero header rows. All right, hit enter. We already saw how nice and pretty this looks. And we can do the same thing to get the total number sold by quarter. So we'll go through that one quickly. All right, it gave the results. We're going to drag this in and look at this query function. And what it changed was you can use the word quarter. So the SQL language understands quarter and no longer has to add one to it because the quarters are one, two, three, four. They don't start at zero and we're going to group it by quarter. We're going to use the count function instead of sum, and we'll label it count. All right, so that's how to do that with a function for the second question. Now, the third question was one that the explore function could not answer, so that one we can get a little bit more in depth with the query function. And this question was the total sales amounts by day of the week. So since this query function is returning the total amounts. Let's start with that. And these query functions are arrays. So they return multiple rows and or columns, but they reside in the upper left-hand corner of the range. So this function lives in F2, but you can see it's putting a frame around the entire amount that it's going to return. And we're just talking about that because if you want to repeat this function, you have to go up into F2 to copy it and then we'll place it in F22 and paste, and it's going to write itself out again to the right and below. Now you'll notice we had a little bit of problem here is that there's a blank row above, and that's because we accidentally shifted the range down when we copied and paste this. All right, so now the range is saying A22 to D1021. We could just go in here and correct this by changing the A22 back to a two and this back to a thousand and one. 
but we could also do this in a more proper way. Could have done this from the, the beginning if we wanted to. Select this entire range and I'm going to call it car underscore sales. And I'm using the underscore because we want to avoid spaces and named ranges. But this is called the named range and you do it. So one of the reasons why is because it will never shift down. Car sales will always start in A1. So let's go back to this query, change the range to car sales, left click on that. And then I'm anticipating another change we need to make because now we're including the header. Let's just come to the end of the query function and change the zero to a one. Ugh, get rid of this. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, here's a zero to a one. All right, so let's double check our total. All right, we're at 45 million, but we still haven't answered the question of sales by day of the week. We're still doing months. So let's look at this query formula. And right now it's still doing month and it's adding one. So the, along with month, there's something called day of the week. Excuse me, it's day of week. And let me bring my reference onto the screen for a minute. This is query language reference uh, provided by Google. And when you go down and look at the scalar functions, this is showing you some of the ways that it can work with dates. And there is one called day of the week. So it's going to return the day of the week from a date. So that's what we want. Let's just copy this day of week. We'll go back into the query. We're going to change month to day of the week, day of week. We'll even change the label. We'll just paste day of week in there. And let's take out the plus ones because it starts with a one, not a zero now. We should be able to hit enter. And there we go. The day of the week goes one through seven. The totals of 45 million. All right, if you want more practice with the query function in this next video, we're going to start with the basics of it and then work our way through. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see others just like it, please subscribe in the lower right hand corner. Thanks.